Welcome to this video on how to print and build the turnout servo mount with MicroSwitch. Now this is a pretty simple method to control your turnouts or points as we say in the UK. So let's just see one in action. So the goal obviously is to move the turnout backwards and forwards and these are the items that we are going to need to build this. So let's have a quick look at how this is all done. So this is the design. You have obviously the main unit and then there are two uh, covers that help to hold the um, micro switch in place. Just moving this over a little bit. So the way this works is obviously the servo goes into this slot, just pushes down hard and the piece of piano wire goes down through this hole. Then on the front, let's just spin this around. The micro switch will go on here and these two little covers go front and back. Now you'll notice these are not round holes. They are actually slightly elongated and that's so that you can adjust the position of the micro switch depending on how far your servo throws. Right, let's have a look at the print. So here obviously is the print. Uh, this one I've just printed out of, I think it's Creality Hyper PLA. Uh, I would tend to print these. I've had these on my layout now for just over a year, uh, various prototypes that I've built, and I've always tended to use PLA+. PLA plus. Uh, you'll get away with PETG, um, you could go to ABS or something fancy. Uh, I wouldn't tend to use just standard PLA. It might go a little bit brittle over time, whereas I've found the PLA Plus is, uh, is better and it has that little bit more flexibility. And you'll need that when you push the servo into the slot because it's a tight fit. Right, the other components you need to build this you will need a piece of piano wire. This is uh, just some cheap piano wire. I think it cost me about three pound for a meter. That'll be, be enough for me for years. Um, you need to use a 0.5 to 0.8 millimeter. And all you do is you cut yourself off a length and then basically put a hook in it and put it through the servo horn this piece obviously goes on the front of the servo. If you want the turnout uh, to also control the polarity of the frog of your turnout, then you are going to need the micro switch. This is obviously optional. Here's one that I have built earlier. And you can see I have the micro switch in here. As you can see, it is adjustable because I haven't done the bolts up yet. But if I hold that in place, all that happens is as the servo turns in the one direction, it turns the switch on. Going in the other direction, the switch is turned off. So there is one contact here that will go to the frog. And then you've got a contact that would go to either side of the track, depending on the polarity and uh, if you want a circuit diagram, I can always draw one of those up and I'll put it on the Digital Town site. So all you're going to need is a couple of uh, these are M2 bolts. Uh, you need them to be 15 mil long as a minimum. I think these are about 20 mil as that's all I've got left in the box. As you can see, the servo just pushes down. There is the space in the back, I have put the holes in the print so you can actually put the bolts through to hold the servo in place. I'll be honest, I've never bothered yet because it is quite a tight fit. Now, obviously, this is designed to fit under the baseboard. All I do is I drill a, um, I put the turnout in its center position put a mark through and then drill. I do a 10 mil diameter hole through the baseboard. And then basically all you do is when you have the servo in its center position, and one of the important things about building these is that you 
set the servo to its center position before you install it. Then obviously set the horn of the servo pointing straight down 90 degrees and then basically shove this thing through your baseboard, through the hole in the turnout and maneuver it until it's in the roughly the right position. One of the great things about this system is obviously there is some flex in the uh, piano wire. So if you don't get it completely square, you know, or you're a little bit sort of forwards or backwards, it will be fine with that. It will, this one in fact, that you were watching move earlier, isn't actually square and it's working fine. Now, as always, below the video, there is a link to the Digital Town site where I keep more information on this stuff. Um, I printed, I've printed this with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and 0.2 millimeter layers. However, I have also printed it with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle and 0.12 millimeter layers. I've got two end of threes. One has a 0.4 nozzle, one has a 0.2, and obviously it's slower with the 0.2, but it came out fine. Um, so as I say, I've used PLA Plus and the Creality Hyper PLA, and both have been fine. There are no supports or anything like that, and obviously the STL file can be downloaded from Colts 3D. So the next question, how much is all this going to cost? Well, obviously there's not a lot of uh, cost in the material in the PLA, Although I must admit, I've done so many versions of this to get it right that I've got bins full of the stuff. You're going to need an MG90 servo. Now, if you're like me and you use AliExpress, you can get these at sort of £1.50 each. If you're a little bit uh, more sort of down the eBay route, um, they're going to cost you just over £2 a piece. The micro switches, if you're going to need them, they're going to cost you £4 for 10 so the parts themselves are cheap. Piano wire was about £3 and a set of bolts. I think I paid about £3 for a pack or something. I've got enough to last me a lifetime. So the parts themselves are not very expensive. And it just means that you can build you know, as many of these units as you want very quickly. So building the unit is reasonably easy. The next thing you need to do is actually control the servo. And for that, you're going to need a microcontroller. I've got a range here. There's an Arduino Uno, a Nano, and a couple of ESP32s. And these are some servo driver boards. Now, you can, if you're just building a single unit or just a couple of these, you could just use a single Arduino style unit. Uh, you can connect these boards and you could connect up, was it 16 and these daisy chain, you can actually connect up several hundred of these to one controller if you wanted, providing you've got enough power. I'm going to do a series on controlling these because it's the same control system as is used for the KD uncoupler that I did a video of a couple of days ago. So I will do a set of videos on how to control it, whether you want to do it with push buttons that are local to the unit, whether you want to do it via an infrared controller, Wi-Fi, uh, now rail. There's lots and lots of different options. And if there's a particular way that you are interested in controlling the servo, drop a comment and I'll see if I can do a video on that method. So that's going to come up over the next few days. But the unit itself, very, very easy to print, very, very easy to sort of to put together. And uh, that's about it for this video. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple item to print. Uh, it works in a very simple way. And if you have any questions about either controlling the servo or printing, please uh, either e email me off the Digital Town site or put a comment below the video and I'll get back to you. So don't forget to click the like and subscribe if you want to be updated when the control videos come out. I think that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.